All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the 56th Chicago International Film Festival Q&A for the Shorts 2 program. I'm very excited to welcome a few of the filmmakers from the program here tonight. So I'd love to have all of you introduce yourselves and, and say what film you're associated with and I guess any introductory things you'd like to say about the film. So why don't we start with uh, Step Into the River. Can you introduce yourself, Weija? Yes, sure. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Weija. Um, director of the Step Into the River. It's an animated short film. Um, we've been working together on it for uh, five years now. It's actually just 15 minutes, but for the past, um, for the beginning at the the very, um, the, the first uh, four years, we actually worked on the script and uh, the storyboard. Uh, for a long time and then we got funded. So last year we actually put our time to produce it. So yeah, I guess, um, and we work on the team um, with the friends, French producers and uh, animators. So I'm glad to be here to, um, in, to join you uh, at the Chicago Film Festival. Um, I actually, I was studying SAIC in Chicago since 2013 and I was in the festival, I think it was um, 2015, the one I participated in because I, my last short film got in too. So it's a very pleasure to be here again and I feel Chicago has been always generous for me. So that's it. Thank you. And not only did you play at the festival, but you won a prize at the festival, if I'm remembering correctly. So we're thrilled to have you back in the program. Um, and how about the Pilar team? Can I, you guys can go next and introduce yourselves. Uh, I'll, I'll start. Uh, hi, I am uh, JJ Epping. I'm one of the uh, produce, uh, directors of uh, Pilar. And um, we work with the three of us, uh, with Diana and Ingwi. Uh, and we made the painted animation uh, called Pilar. I don't want to take all the time, so please <laughs> take it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Diana, uh, also part of uh, the Pilar team. Uh, and the three of us, uh, we, ha we have a studio together that's called Molly Bird Studio. And um, well, we're, uh, first of all, we're illustrators from heart. And, uh, and uh, there also lies a, a great love for, for painting. And uh, that really brought us together in, in making art for uh, different kinds of series and uh, other films, uh, but also our, our, our pet project, Pilar, which uh, took us around five years to make. <laughs> Quite a time. Uh, <laughs> it's also uh, it's not only because uh, painting and animation uh, is is very yeah costs a lot of time of course, but also um, yeah the the process uh, going to the the story we wanted to create was uh, was a very organic one and we took our time and uh, we also had great support from our producers uh, from Illustr and um, I think uh, yeah being uh, yeah creating a very strong team together with the producers and also animators from Belgium uh, yeah made made our story extra strong and yeah I'm very glad we can be here at the <laughs> at the Chicago festival and uh, well I think uh, that's it <laughs> all right and I'm Ingvi Volle I'm also one of the directors makers animators from the Pilar team and Moldyward Studio. And yeah, what can I add to that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a very close working relation together as a studio. So on this film, we actually all contributed roughly the same amount of work on all parts of it. So we did everything together from animating to uh, storyboarding, ed editing, so yeah, it was really a collaborative effort, this animation. Yeah, I'm glad to be here as well. Great, and Josephine, if you could introduce yourself and the fabric of you. 
Yeah, so um, yeah, my name is Joyce Veen. Um, I'm a British uh, voice director, mainly working in stop motion animation. Um, the Fabric of You is a, um, a story sort of quite heavily based on um, the graphic novel Mouse and other sort of American graphic novels like um, A Contract with God. Um, so that was sort of the main um, inspiration for the short. Um, it premiered uh, in Edinburgh International Film Festival last year. And it's kind of just reaching up just, yeah, it's about a year and, uh, yeah, just over a year old now. Um, it's about um, memory and how, um, like, memory um, of, um, uh, and, like, grief kind of intersects and how, um, and also I kind of wanted to make the film as well to sort of um, challenge um, certain uh, expectations, I guess, around stop motion animation. I was quite keen to kind of um, make uh, work for uh, a more adult audience. So although it kind of looks like a children's animation, it certainly isn't because um, <laughs> it deals with, um, yeah, themes like grief and things like that. Um, and yeah, I'm not really sure what else to say. Um, I'm based in Berlin at the moment and I'm working on other stop motion. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it, yeah. <laughs> Could you let, let me know how long it took? It sounds like the other two projects uh, here today took like five years. I, I'm curious about the timeline first, the stop motion. Um, yeah, so we got commissioned. Um, so we sort of went through um, this scheme called the, so it was made in Scotland and we went through the scheme called um, the Scottish, uh, Scottish Talent Network. So they sort of supported the script um, and it got commissioned, I think, in September last year. And then we finished it in June last year so it was a couple of months and I was sort of the sole animator on it so I think I was animating for like four or five months um but yeah it's quite a baptism by fire um project um made a lot of mistakes and uh <laughs> kind of was the first time I worked with it um in an with an animatic as well because I didn't I didn't study animation at um at uni so it was a really good project to uh yeah learn how to fail quite hard on but um yeah it was, it was good um and yeah, so yeah, and it took about Andrew a year to me. Well, the end result is quite beautiful. So thank you for sharing it with us. I want to ask, you mentioned that you were sort of inspired by these American comics. I would like to ask the other filmmakers and that are here today about sort of the beginnings, the like initial sort of inspiration for, for your film. So um, why don't we hear from the Pilar team about the, the beginnings of the, their film? Uh, yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Um, I mean, we are foremost illustrators, so uh, inspirations from comics and animation, well, that's definitely a given. Um, we love movies, especially uh, if you've already seen it. Our movies are quite inspired by myths and mythology as well, but also we really liked uh, movies from uh, Guillermo del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth, where you have this mythical creature as well um but also a very adult story as well so it's it is sort of a testicle environment but it has very adult themes so from what uh josephine said it like it's it's definitely the same for us as well we um love uh, animation and illustration but we like to make very mature themed stories as well and uh so we're also big comic fans as well <laughs> um, and also uh, short stories uh, there was one that we read it's called some um, stories about afterlives and it's from David Eagleman I think if I remember correctly <laughs> and they have these short stories where uh, there's a person who uh, chooses to be an animal in the afterlife and so we al always like being inspired by myths uh, about animals and folklore um, so that's definitely an inspiration and I think Diana came with another one lately <laughs> um, that I forgot about so I hope she can tell a bit more about that um. I don't know which one you're talking about. <laughs> well, there is um, well the, the an anime uh, Tekken Kingcrete. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's uh, that's also uh, yeah a very mature story, uh, very with uh, yeah very symbolic also because of uh, yeah 
uh, the black and the white, like the yin and the yang. And um, there's also a, a minotaur at the end that uh, that kind of binds the two together. Uh, there was also a, a force from from from. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's a force from uh, something that's out there. Uh, and that's maybe that's that's a connection also with our movie because uh, it's about a force coming into. Uh, uh, yeah, a village that is uh, completely uh, trying to block everything that's coming from uh, from from the outside, and um, this uh, character we created, Pilar, is very uh, fascinated by uh, what's on the outer walls of uh, of the the, the post-apocalyptic village. And, and there's where that's that's what we find is very uh, interesting because it's about trying to 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 develop and trying to uh, be uh, your true self and trying to find it and uh, coming yeah becoming something uh, what you really want to be can uh, can uh, develop in very many different ways and. Uh, yeah, well, Pilar, the story of Pilar is, is one of them. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, uh, Wajja, can you talk a, a bit about the sort of beginnings of Step Into the River and what sort of inspired you to tell the story? Yeah. Um, so for this, this Step Into the River, it's actually a heavy topic story that tellings the story of abandoned baby girls. Um, I think in my, in my generation, I was born in the 90s. Um, so this um, cultural preference of, you know, uh, that more valuing boys over girls, it's a, you know, like a historical value in China. And uh, it took a very long time still um, is, uh, exists now and uh, the the story of the the uh, of step into the river is actually taking the background of the year when i was a when i was a kid and uh, back then we have we had the policy of one child policy in china and um, this policy started in uh, the early 80s and it's actually just we just changed the policy in 2016. So when I when I came up with the idea of the story, it was in 2015, and uh, we we were still in the policy. And um, this policy somehow uh, make made people try to give up a, a baby girl's life to you know to to had another chance to have a a boy a son. So. That is a, a trigger for me uh, because I lived in that uh, generation. I had, uh, I have heard many stories, real stories about the the hard decisions and the situation, and the story is actually taking um, perspectives of two girls and who who survived. One survived because her uh, brother who died. That's why he. That's why she. She got a chance to 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 be born, and the other girl was uh, almost uh, killed by her by all parents, but adopted by another man. So we are taking perspective of these two girl characters who are survivors. Um, so that's that's the the first stage of the this story that I was trying to show how. Uh, these two girls struggling in this culture, but it's not. Uh, it it is realistic, but we have um, an imagination part of it that shows how how kids are um, imagining what what is happening, and also we we can feel in this uh, culture the the adults are trying to avoiding the the facts, but for for the kids they're. Uh, emotional, they are they are sensitive. They 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 somehow got the the idea of of their struggling of their uh, female identity. So that's how I I started to make this story. But uh, for the for the the arts that inspired me, uh, I like the 
famous Chinese writer very much who was, I think it was in 2018, he got uh, awarded by the Nobel uh, Literature Award. And in his novel, he's always like uh, very realistic and somehow very imaginationary. Um, so I got a lot of ins inspiration from his work. I also like a lot of actually many um, action, live action films and animations. Um, animations like uh, Miyazaki's film, but it's not the spirited away. It's another one that is heartbreaking. Uh, that I feel when we when we give um, hard topics for animation, we can still you know in a way we can still touch people's heart and somehow we can even uh, give more power to to the story. So those are the works that inspired me a lot. Great, thank you. Yeah, I think the film really sort of, it's this really personal, but also extremely political film, which I think is one of its great strengths. Uh, it, it, I don't know how you did it, but to combine that with this kind of surreal dreaminess is, is a, a really strong element, I think. Um, so thank you all, obviously, for sharing your work. I want to ask about like this sort of um, a question we get from audiences a lot. So I'll sort of relay that here is like the specific technical, like the stylistic techniques that were employed, because I know animation is this like large umbrella that it, uh, it sort of encompasses all kinds of styles. And I think these three films are all extremely different in their style. So can, can I, anyone can take this uh, to start, but um, could you just kind of describe the like technical process of how the animation sort of came on screen? Anyone can take that. Josephine, why don't you go? I'll go first, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like puppet based, I guess. So we have, we make, um, I actually got, I've actually been sent them here, so I actually can, I can like, let me see if I can grab one. Um, Michael has been sent here um, with me, but this is one of the puppets actually um, that we use for the film. Um, we're actually doing a Kickstarter because um, we've got like, a, we, um, we won an award at Palm Springs, which makes us like eligible for Oscars. Anyway, we're doing a Kickstarter, we're raising money, so I'm plugging that early on here, guys. So <laughs> maybe I'll get you to share something. But anyway, I will be making a video shortly with these guys to um, raise some money for um, for that. But um, but yeah, this puppet, uh, yeah, we make the puppets and we have like armatures underneath. And uh, it's again, it's sort, of, it's sort of just like work at sort of 24 frames a second. So um, uh yeah so we just animate usually then the last film was just me animating it so i've just been in a dark room with these guys and uh yeah and then we have we had quite a lot of post on our on our film um so we had some vfx of like rain and stuff but yeah i think as you say there's like lots of different ways of doing things and um so you can like i, ha I do know people that have like animated rain and stuff like that but it's, it was sort of just a choice for us to um, work with a little bit of VFX. Um, so we also had a lot of that. Um, and yeah, that's about it. It's like puppet stuff. Just puppet stuff. Yeah, I think it's especially the environments in, in the film are so detailed. And um, I'm sure it was shot digitally, but it has almost like a filmic uh, look to it, I think, maybe just because of the materials that the puppets are made of. Um, uh, Pilar, why don't you guys talk about the yeah. like technical process? Well, we can definitely relate to being shut in a dark room for hours on end because because <laughs> that's what we did as well because we made uh, we made the film um, like a stop motion animation so like you're making a film with puppets and actually shooting them but with paintings that's the easiest way to explain it so we actually painted all the animation on a canvas. Um, frame by frame and that means that we, for each frame we had to repaint everything that moves so all the frames of of a shot are actually lined up on the same canvas just buried in paint <laughs> yeah. and that's uh that's how we made it and yeah. Yeah, I mean, D Diana and I um, made a film before in this technique. Uh, we did an internship where we used uh, puppets as well. And again, we're illustrators. We didn't have any animation sort of background, only like 
we knew the basics. So uh, what, um, what we did is definitely used a stop motion technique um, because mostly we didn't know how to start uh, hand drawing animation or use the computer for this. So we felt like, what do we know and what do we like to do? And we love to paint. And we really liked the idea of this technique where you have, uh, you see a figure, but you see also the underneath, like the layers, like a trail of uh, what you did before. So it's like a sort of motion blur almost. So we really wanted to do for the second movie when we're making this technique that you could actually see the paint work as well and just perfect it a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so we uh, definitely were very pale after this, <laughs> this whole time because we were sitting in artificial light for a very long time. So uh, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also uh, beforehand, before we could uh, paint the whole animation, uh, we had a whole process of making it in 2D uh, at first. So there uh, we had a, a terrific uh, Belgian team that helped us uh, making the 2D animation. And um, when that was done, uh, we could transfer it uh, uh, with a stop motion program uh, and a live view uh, of our camera to know what we were actually going to paint. So actually we made animation two times, so one in 2D animation, and then painting it on canvases. And so uh, I think we had around uh, 120 canvases uh, uh, with uh, in a total with a total of uh, uh, 3,200 uh, paintings shots that were made so uh <laughs> that was not so fun <laughs> um well uh and um yeah that's it was it was a great process to 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 go through uh it's uh yeah we were during the process we we found uh ways to to work more efficiently and uh but also uh it it's, it was really, it's, it was great to, to, to see the paintings come alive, of course, and because uh, there's a really, yeah, it's a very organic way in uh, how you can work with paint. It's, uh, you, can, you, you, you can work with opacity or uh, work with brush strokes. And that was also the reason why we wanted to make, make it uh, uh, with paint because it's very expressive. So yeah, that's our, really our love for paint on canvas in, in our film. And I'm curious, uh, are, are these canvases, these 120 canvases, are, is there anything left of them? Is, are, or are they kind of like working? Can you like distribute them to your 120 closest friends? Or like, I, I guess, uh, like in what state are they right now? Yeah. Uh, well, most of the paintings are uh, in, in a good state, so uh, with, with very nice ending shots and sometimes they end with uh, just a blurry uh, smoke thingy and, uh, and that's it. But there are, maybe we should, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, should, you should have the, the pictures to see what's underneath, of course. Uh, and sometimes we also have paintings with uh, like, a, like a, now half a centimeter of uh, of paint that's uh, that's on top, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's the real deal. We we don't have a plan actually, but it would be great for an exposition exposition or something. Uh, but of course, it's it's too bad. It's 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 too it's very difficult to put it on festivals uh, in this kind of time. So okay. we'll have to find a way. <laughs> you could do like a um an extremely special edition, uh, like Blu-ray release of the film, and it could come with one of the canvases. I don't know, something to think about. You could really charge a lot of money. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we might, yes. Very good plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such good um, ideas. <laughs> how about the process for Step Into the River? Can you speak a little bit about sort of the technical process? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's basically, it's quite uh, traditional 2D animation, but we, we did the, all the animation and coloring of the characters in the TV paint software, which is a, a, a 2D uh, software um, that's invented by French animators. It's quite useful. Um, and for the background, we first we tried to paint in, you know, digitally, 
in, in Photoshop too, but then turned out I, I feel the textures are not real enough and it, you can still feel it's, you know, me mechanical. So then later we decided to paint all the backgrounds on uh, paper with pastel. Uh, so that's, we, we painted and then we, we scan all the, the elements of the, the backgrounds into a computer and then we did more details drawings and then we, we some, sometimes even change the color of it and then we add lights to it. And then for the last, we, we bend everything together. But in this film, we have a realistic uh, scenes, but we also have the imagination uh, scenes. For, for the imagination scenes, it's all pure hand drawings uh, that we, we would uh, put more efforts on how, uh, the, how things transforming from um, each other and we would uh, pay more uh, effects on the on the the strokes of the of the pastels and stuff to make it you know gives the audiences a, a strong um, feelings emotionally feelings to those moments and then we we put all things together and then to to you know uh, make the the colors and lights uh, make them to transfer from each other more naturally because we have uh, uh, many scenes in the film so we had to do um, you know sometimes to considering how everything uh, from cuts from this scene to the next one can be you know uh, visually looks better great thank you um so I now I, I have a couple of specific questions for each of the films. So we'll start with Josephine. I, I'm curious about the um, the character design uh, and the specifically sort of like the human elements on the mouse uh, or the mice, I guess, um, the hands and the feet. Can you talk about that choice and sort of um, how you came to have these like fleshy hands on these mice's bodies? Yeah, so um, yeah, I was quite inspired by um, like literature and, and films that sort of looks um, that sort of dealt with like anthropomorphic um, figures. Um, uh, so yeah, I think like arts film um, was is the, was the biggest influence uh, for the film. Um, he just uh, for those of you who like, I'm sure you guys know his graphic novel, but it's um, it's it's basically about. Um, he tells the story of his father's um, experiences um, as a um, Jewish survivor in in the Holocaust, and he also interweaves it between his own um, personal story of like his relationship with his um, his father, while he sort of collects these stories, um, and he he portrays all the um, uh, in the story he portrays all the Jews as mice and all the um, Germans as cats. I think he portrays uh, the Americans as dogs or something, but he sort of assigns each uh, nationality um, their own animal. And um, I think he initially decided to do it because um, I think Hitler would, like referred to the Jews as like vermin or something. So I think he was kind of like making a comment on the sort of absurdity of drawing people along these sort of divisions um so he's sort of making a comment about that within the novel um and then also i was like researching animal farm as well and and how um yeah these sort of um, farm farm animals can create um yeah can just add to these much bigger political messages about communism and i'm just yeah i'm just very intrigued by how animals uh, can be used to sort of appeal to very like some of our senses and to sort of portray political messages i guess so that was the kind of decision um and yeah i was kind of stylistically i was kind of like wanting to create some sort of like um yeah quite like a a world based in sort of human reality but also the, there wasn't something quite right so having everyone's um yeah these other characters as, as mice um and yeah i think that's it <laughs> Yeah, I think it creates like a, a kind of, it's like almost an empathetic choice. It creates this, it opens this emotional door that might otherwise have been closed. So I, I think it works really well. Um, so for Pilar, I, I want to ask about, it, it's, I want to ask about the collaboration and uh, working w within a team to create this sort of like 
flowing, beautiful, uh, almost film poem. Can, can you talk about the like working together, not on the animation technique specifically, but like on uh, on the story and um, sort of gaming out how it, one image would flow into another? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people ask about how does this work, uh, three directors. Um, I've known Diana for a very long time and uh, Ingwi as well. He was an intern uh, at our like earlier work, <laughs> like our first uh, animation. Um, but we are really good friends and uh, the three of us are really inspired and intrigued by the same things. And how we work together, it's um, just, uh, we all do the same things. So when one is working on a background, uh, someone would maybe take it over at one point, or if one is working on one scene, uh, another one did it as well. Um, so, um, well, I mean, Diana had more like a preference for animals and for uh, more of a expressionistic sort of feel. And uh, I just li really like making sort of faces and people and Ingi is just amazing at backgrounds and in colors uh, so we did give each other like a uh, assignment like what do you want to do but uh, at the same time we created the story together we uh, created the scenes together the storyboards together and uh, really trust each other just to uh, give each other a critique as well um, so it, it felt very natural and uh, we really like it and we don't have like these egos or anything so <laughs> we wanted to like give each other an opportunity to shine as well but it's uh, just a really big collaboration between the three of us and uh, I would love to make another movie with them and we're still working in the same studio so I think we still like each other <laughs> so <laughs> uh, and I think uh, just for maybe like the next uh, 50 years, I hope to work with them as well. Yeah. I, I hope I uh, <laughs> said it well enough. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was really, yeah, a really organic way of, of, uh, of making a film and making a story. And it was like uh, the, the story was quite fluid for a very long time. And uh, uh, and then there was just one more moment when we said, okay, and, and it, it's now about one character that try, that tries to uh, yeah, find her, her inner self uh, and, and try to, to go uh, find her, her own freedom in her own way. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we, all, we all really liked that idea. And uh, so it, it could be, it's also, uh, yeah, it's, it can be a personal story for, for the three of us, not just for one. And I think uh, that gave us a lot of space uh, in the story itself to, uh, yeah, to go all the ways and uh, yeah, doing all the things we would really actually just like to make and put it in a movie, <laughs> like the the animals, uh, like Janice uh, said, and uh, also making a very expressive backgrounds. Uh, and Inwi was very good with with color and uh, and yeah. Also, yeah, always finds great combinations that work very expressive and then uh, very uh, emotional uh, faces that also Jens can can provide uh, with painting and yeah, so together we're very, uh, we're very happy, happy, uh, <laughs> happy team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got very little to add to that. That's, that's about it. Yeah. Well, the results of the collaboration are certainly beautiful. So congratulations on that. Um, and Weisha, I want to ask you about the um, sp a specific moment in the film, the, the sort of um, the dream sequence uh, that with the babies uh, and the children in the water. Can you talk about that? It's such a striking moment. Can you talk about um, sort of designing that image specifically and, and making that moment work? Yeah, sure. Uh, they are as I, as I said, there are, there are two girls, two main characters in the film. Um, actually, uh, both of them had these imagination uh, moments there. And both of those moments are, are different from most of the film's style. Um, for, the, for the girl who, who found uh, a, her, 
a, a hat that belonged to her her baby brother who, who died before she was born and her, her grandmother when she grand her grandmother tried to uh, brought back this memory of how they how they did a little ceremony like a, a funeral to to the the brother and when i think about that i always it, it, the, the the fire came to me at the at the the first moment because when like in the in a big fire when people try to burn the 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 things of this baby brother his clothes and his um, stuff in the fire so and then the smoke would be you know uh, like spreads all over in the sky so that's a, a strong elements that when i when i trying to design this uh, scene it came to me so i put the fire um bend to like transforming to the the red hat uh it's a it's a it's a key moment that uh, brought the audiences from the the real um, real moments, the present time to the past. Actually, it's also a, a like a kind of like a imagination from the girl because she actually uh, wasn't there in the in the um, funeral. And for the other girls, um, imagination moments. Uh, she because she she was uh, her her bio parents tried to drowned her in the in the river so she would have this uh strong connection with the water with the with the river so uh when i think about that um i i made her deeply put her head into the water and that's the that's the moment we 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 went through he her imagination with her and then when she when she's her head is already in the in the water uh i i think maybe it's good to give a, a shot that the camera is under the water and then we will we would see how the we would see the the parents their their faces are blur we can't tell their identity but we can see the big hand that give away this baby and then the, the hand would pull out from the water and then that moment the the em, emotion is the thing that i want the most to you know to it's kind of like slapping right in your face to to have the the feeling of uh experiencing a, a baby to sinking into the water so that's how i designed that scene and i actually make this scene come back uh, twice in the in the movie, but the second time it's a little bit different. Uh, it's also to you know when it's also connected to the dialogue when when she, what what she's saying in that moment, and then how she uh, how she and identify herself because she's not only uh, disappointed or or like struggle as a as a female identity she also she also has this birthmark that um make this female identity less valuable like you know what i'm saying like uh, people would uh consider a beauty as a very uh as a very big quality for women but as this girl she's already not satisfied to being a female and at the same uh, time she's not beautiful so she 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 has this uh, connection of being a koi fish uh, which is beautiful as the mark spreads all over its body so i just make these two connections together to have a second round to make a little bit difference but this time it's a deeper sort of thank you um i we, we can wrap up pretty quickly or pretty soon here but i'm wondering if any of the filmmakers if any of you guys have questions for one another i don't know if you've seen seen the work yet but um sort of open floor if you guys have questions for one another it's all right if you're sorry. I don't know. So I'd just be interested in what everyone's working on at the moment. Um, is everyone like working on films similar, like similar to their, the, the films that they're showing here in the same techniques or are people doing something really different? Yeah, I'd just be interested. Uh, yeah, at the moment uh, we're doing more uh, illustrative work. 
um, so uh, we're making backgrounds for an animation. Uh, it's called Nayola. It's about G three generations of women in Angola. And it's a collaboration between uh, Portugal from um, the director, uh, Jose Miguel. And uh, he uh, has a collaboration between France and Belgium and the Netherlands and uh, Portugal to make this story. So we're making like backgrounds for a very specific sort of fantastical scene uh, where we definitely sort of go back to our roots with uh, illustration and uh, sort of a fantasy setting. It's, yeah, it's a lot of fun as well. And we're going to work on uh, backgrounds for the series Undone. Um, it's uh, an Amazon series uh, directed by Hit Hisko Hulsing. And we're uh, definitely doing more of a technical aspects on backgrounds, so painterly style, uh, for which with Pilar, we definitely had sort of a lot more experience to <laughs> work in a painterly style as well. Yeah, because so, uh, yeah. all the backgrounds on that uh, on that series are oil paint as well, so yeah. there's definitely a connection there. And Wajo, what are you working on right now? Uh, I just finished another project that's also an animated short. Um, it's um, it's a it's a film about uh, this. Vietnam lawyer who uh, is actually based on a real story. It's actually a, a project that funded by uh, uh, Thompson Ru uh, Rutus, the organization that provides uh, the this uh, section is about slavery or over the world. So it's actually the, the short film is a, a series. Uh, I took one of the three and uh, this one is about the slavery in uh, Vietnam. Uh, it's actually, it's, a, it's a also addressing like a female problem, uh, like um, they're the young girls from Vietnam, they are uh, sometimes like, very, it's a very bad situation that they got uh, kidnapped and uh, sold to other, you know, nearest uh, countries to be prostitutes or, or just the sold to be uh, their other other men's wives. And this um, Vietnam lawyer, uh, he's, um, he, he would have plans and then he would actually go to rescue those, those women. So that's basically kind of like a documentary animation. Uh, this is one project I was working on. And it's about to finish because we would release the, the film on the National Slavery Day, which is soon in the middle of October, I think. Great. And Josephine, what are you working on now? You said you mentioned your Kickstarter for this film. Are any other projects in the pipeline? Um, yeah, I've got um, another stop motion in development um, at the moment, but it's a, uh, yeah, so we're kind of just reaching the end of the first draft of the script. Um, and then, yeah, I'm working on a, a short Christmas film, which is kind of mad. Like we got commissioned like a couple of weeks ago and it's, it's a two minute stop motion, but like we have like two months to do it. So it's just like, why did I do this to myself? Um, so yeah, it's, it's good. It's like a challenge. It's like the energy is there for the rest of the crew, but it's like kind of crazy. Cause I think people are like, oh, two minutes, nothing. But then when it's like stop motion, you're like, especially the sort of the detailed stuff that I do, it's kind of a bit, it's a bit crazy. Like, yeah, we're kind of like, what have we done to ourselves? But it should be good. I think we'll have something by December. So don't know what that's going to look like. Hopefully it's going to be good. But yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> currently yeah, torturing myself with. So. Well, I, I'd like to thank all of you for joining me this morning, or I guess this evening. It's, what, uh, it's probably past midnight in Shanghai right now. But um, thanks for being here this morning, and thank you for sharing your films with the Chicago International Film Festival. We're so excited to have you in the program. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you. Having us. <laughs> yes, thank you.